Today we'll be using Nastran Solution 200 to optimize the shape of a gear for both static and modal requirements. We'll begin by creating our simulation files in the Nastran Solver environment and we'll create a Nastran Solution 200 topology optimization. Here we'll set the maximum number of design cycles to 100. And first we'll create a static subcase. And then we'll create a modal subcase as well. All right, since we have a manufacturing constraint for extrusion, what we'll do is we'll create a shell mesh representation of our gear instead. This will ensure an extrusion manufacturing constraint. So here we'll get our associative copy of the geometry, and then we'll create a mid-surface of it. And here I'm editing the mid-surface to have just one surface. Next we'll go to the FEM and we'll put a shell mesh on our mid-surface. And here I'm going to attempt to create a free mapped mesh on it. And I'm also going to create separate meshes for each face. And this is going to be important later when defining our design area. So here you can see it makes a nice mapped mesh on our mid-surface. I've already assigned a material to the solid body so we can inherit that for our mid-surface. And also I've set a customer default to inherit the mid-surface thickness. So here we can plot that mid-surface thickness as a contour and see that our thickness is being inherited correctly. Now that we've created our mesh, let's go and create some constraints on our model. Now because the constraints are in the subcase, we'll need to create two of them. First we'll create a fixed constraint in our static subcase, and I'll apply that to the edge on the ID. Now we can reuse that in the normal mode subcase as well by simply dragging it into the container in the normal mode subcase. All right, next we'll create a load in our static subcase. And I'm going to use a cylindrical coordinate system to define the loads. So here I can create a torque on the outer edge and we'll also put an axial load on it as well. All right, now we'll create a design objective. This will be to minimize compliance or maximize stiffness. Next, we'll define a design area of frozen elements. These will be the elements that we do not want to optimize. Here, I'll give it a label and say OK. Next we'll put in a design constraint and since these are all in the global container they apply to all subcases. So here we want to specify a range for our weight. Now we can create a manufacturing constraint and by definition I've already created an extrude 
manufacturing constraint because I've mid-surfaced it and shell meshed it. Next we'll put in a cyclic symmetry manufacturing constraint where we'll define a point on the symmetry plane and then our vector to define the plane of rotation and then we'll define a vector along the edge of the sector. All right, one thing I forgot here was to define the number of sectors. Here we want six. Now we can define a design constraint specific to our static subcase. So here I'm going to define a stress constraint and the von Mises component. We'll define the mesh that we want to apply that constraint to and then specify the min and max stress. All right, we can also put in an additional design constraint to control the displacement. And here we'll control DOF1 with a lower limit of zero and an upper limit of 0 0.002. And here any node on the OD will be fine. All right, and lastly, we'll define a design constraint in our normal mode subcase. Here I'll specify a frequency constraint to control the lower and upper frequency. All right, so now we're ready to solve. And I'm going to pause the video while we're solving, but here you can see it's completed the design cycles. It hasn't needed to go all the way to 100, and you can see that it's taken a little under five minutes in order to complete. So here you can see we have a number of results for our subcases, and the one that we're interested in to see the shape of the optimized gear is going to be the design cycle the last design cycle and the normalized material density. So you can sort of see what the shape looks like here, but if we adjust our legend and clip the underflow and set a min, you can see a little bit better what material it's recommending to remove. And also if we take an average view, you can see a better shape of the optimized gear.